It's been a year since Apple Watch Series 6 was released. We've been using it every day religiously. And how does it hold up after using it for such an extended period of time? In this video, I'll walk you through it. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and it has been one year since the Apple Watch Series 6 was released. Wait, what? Seriously? Holy rock'em sock'em robots, it seriously has been almost a year. Apple Watch Series 6 dropped on September 20th, and here we are just the month beforehand, we're bringing this to you in August, uh, as we approach this one year mark. So yes, I get it, we're a month shy, but I really wanted to talk about this and give the Apple Watch Series 6 an extended review ahead of the Apple Watch Series 7 release. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through revisiting all of the new features that came to Apple Watch Series 6, how it holds up over the past year, whether or not it makes sense to go with the Apple Watch Series 6 now, or maybe you're better off waiting for the Apple Watch Series 7. We're gonna talk about all of that and more right now. The Apple Watch Series 6 arrived on the scene with several new highly touted features. There wasn't anything earth shattering though in this release. The biggest things that we can talk about are the new S6 processor that promised to be faster. There was a better always on display which really made sense in bright sunlight. There was the new SpO2 measuring which is the blood oxygen saturation and the blood oxygen app that you could use to take those measurements. And we saw new case finishes. Other than that, there's other minor things like the U1 processor, but Apple Watch Series 6 didn't have a ton of things to grab people's attention. Looking back on these features, some of them played more minor roles than we anticipated, and some were bigger deals than we first thought. Take the SpO2 measuring, the blood oxygen level. Not a huge target audience for that in particular. So while I used it a bunch at the launch of the Apple Watch Series 6, Moving on, I didn't really use it. I used it for a few weeks and then I kind of just let it fall by the wayside. Now there are people out there who this is very crucial for and it is a huge tool to be able to have right there on their wrist. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just not one of them. The good news though, it does provide, even for me, a bit of peace of mind. See, the blood oxygen measuring can happen in the background, including while you sleep, and all that is recorded back to the health app. So I do have plenty of historical data to look through. I can look for any highs or lows that I, well, I guess lows, that I should be concerned about, and should my blood oxygen level ever become a concern that I need to monitor, I have plenty of historical data and measurements that I can take to a health professional to help figure out what's going on sooner before it becomes a bigger deal. So while I'm not actively using blood oxygen level, I kind of do enjoy having just another measurement saved back to my phone. Another feature that I initially kind of glossed over is the always on display. So the always on display debuted with the Series 6. <clears throat> another feature that I did not give enough credit to at launch was the upgraded always on display. So the always on display debuted with the Series 5 and of course it carried through to the Series 6, letting you to always see what's going on in your watch even if you don't lift up your wrist. But it didn't change much. The thing that really changed was that it was two and a half times brighter in direct sunlight. So with the Apple Watch Series 6 debuting in the fall, I would walk outside and I would test this a little bit and anecdotally, yes, this is, this is a nice thing. But then we all hibernated indoors for the winter and Months later, I forgot that this was even an upgraded feature whatsoever. It wasn't until I was checked out my wife's watch in the sun as we were going into the spring and summer. I'm like, wow, you can't even see your display. And I look at mine and I realize how much brighter it really is. I've been doing a ton of remodeling around the house, working on the lawn and the yard, uh, as well as heck, even building a chicken coop in the way back of the yard. So I've been toiling away in the bright sunlight almost forgetting how much better my display is until you see what it was before. When you recognize that, you truly do understand how much better and big of a difference that two and a half times of brightness is when you are in that bright summer sun. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are several new case finishes coming with the Series 6. We have a new blue option in the aluminum. We have titanium up there. And then for the stainless steel, it went from a space black to a graphite color. That's what I'm sporting right here, my graphite Apple Watch Series 6. 
I, initially, I was very pessimistic about this. I didn't love the color because it's lighter than the Space Black. So in a lot of lighting, it looks very similar to the Silver Apple Watch. And I liked the darker hue that the Space Black had provided with the Series 5 and earlier. But after having some time to adjust and replacing a few bands that didn't necessarily match it perfectly, I've come to really adore the new color. It's lighter, but it's still dark at the same time. It's just very high gloss. So it is lighter, but you can still definitely tell there's a black hue there. And I've started using Apple's new bands more often than I did in the past. Things like this guy here, which is the leather link band. This is my daily driver, my daily band. This is what I wear day in and day out, either this one or the yellow version, the California poppy color. I like that one as well. Just depends on the time of year, really. But I've been using these bands pretty much every day unless I'm doing something like working in the yard where I want something a little more sweat proof or durable. But for a daily wear and going out, I love these leather link bands and they look great. Whether you have the steel, whether you have the titanium or any of the aluminum models. So now that I didn't have to worry as much about the lugs matching the case, uh, it hasn't really been an issue whatsoever for us, and I'm very excited if Apple keeps this color around, I'll be on board. I don't think they're going to go back to space black, but I would imagine maybe the titanium may go by the wayside. There's only a couple other features that I really want to go back and revisit. The first being the U1 chip. So Apple's ultra-wideband chip here, almost a year later, it doesn't do anything. Not, not really, not anything you're going to notice or care about. The biggest things are that the U1 will be able to do things like unlock your car with Apple's car key initiative that you can use uh, your Apple Watch to get into your car and authenticate and all of that, which is great and fantastic. But if you don't have a car that supports it, and considering that there's almost nothing out there that does at this point, uh, it's really not any good. Apple is making improvements with Watch OS 8 coming out soon, but really, there's no use for the U1 processor at this time. So even though it's in here, and it may be good if I was keeping this watch for several more years, and I would buy a new BMW that supported car key, then yes, I would be very happy. Uh, but for those who don't fall into that bucket, the U1 is just an added expense to the watch that's not particularly going to pay off, uh, at least for the time being. The Apple Watch Series 6 does include Apple's S6 processor. Now this new chipset in there, Apple does promise that it's about twice as fast as before. This is something that's really hard to notice. It was kind of like the conversion to HD. Many people went from you know SD to 720 or 1080 and they didn't notice a huge difference. You know, they're like, oh, it's, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Uh, but it wasn't like, you know, you're rushing out to get it. And that's how I felt going from the S5 to the S6, you know, SIP here. I could see anecdotally it was a little bit quicker, but what I noticed most was after using this for an extended period of time, just like watching HD video for an extended period of time, when you go back to the old chip, to standard definition, you notice the huge difference between them. I've seen people go to HD, use it for a while, barely even notice it, but go back to SD, like why does this look so bad? And then I feel the same way about my watch. It, I'm like, okay, this seems pretty much as similar as it was before. But I go back to use somebody's uh, Series 5 watch, my wife's, and it's so much slower. It's a problem, and it's very annoying. And I feel like I'm waiting for things to happen. I feel like I'm waiting for it to connect to things. All of these ramifications of it being 20% eh, or so slower. So yes, launching apps is fast, and I have no complaints whatsoever about the speed here. I wouldn't say it was like a reason for me to upgrade, but it is good to know that you do notice it, and you notice even more retroactively. Some things still are bugging me. Apple Watch's battery life is still just okay. It's not great, it gets me through the day, and I have a good routine. I do use Apple Watch for sleep tracking, so I wear this at night, but I do have to make sure I find time during the day to charge the watch up. And there are days where I don't make it there, and I end up with just not enough battery life to get me through the day, or I don't have enough time to charge it before I just completely pass out from exhaustion. So it would be nice if Apple was to include a larger battery in a future Apple Watch. I'm just not so certain that that is gonna happen at least for some time. Now, looking back at everything, looking at all these new features, do I regret upgrading from the Series 5 to the Series 6? I don't, I don't regret it, but I also don't have anything that I would you know, leap forward for it for. I've appreciated these features that I have them now, but looking back, I probably wouldn't necessarily make the same decision that I did. 
and looking at the Series 7, uh, it's an even tougher of a call. We have not heard that many rumors on the Series 7 other than the redesign. We're going to see this new flat side, possibly sage green color that John Prosser has been talking about, these renders and cast that have leaked. So it looks like there is going to be redesigned to the watch, the biggest since its inception, but that's the biggest feature it's supposed to have. So as I'm looking at the Series 6 now, and as I'm recommending to other people whether or not they should buy a Series 6 now or wait for the Series 7, the biggest thing it comes down to is, is that Series 7 design going to be worth it for you to upgrade? If you love that new design and you have to have that, then wait for the Series 7. But if you are okay with how the Apple Watch looks now, you think this looks great as I do, you are fine picking up the Series 6 at this moment. It is not slow running Watch OS 8 on here. It's still amazingly fast and has gotten several new features. I love it. So the Series 6, it's still an amazing Apple Watch. The new features for me have not been the biggest selling points as previous generations have, like going to the always on display was a huge upgrade reason and I didn't regret it one second. But looking back at this, I probably didn't need to upgrade to the Series 6. I'm, I'm smart enough to be able to admit that. Um, but I also know that I just do it because one, I, I do it for work for you guys and because I like to have the newest version, whether or not it makes sense and really pays off in the end. So let me know what you guys think. Or do you have a Series 6? What did you upgrade from? Do you regret it? And are you considering the Series 7? Stay tuned because we're going to round up all the rumors coming to the Apple Watch Series 7 very soon. Let me know what you guys think on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.